Hi, everyone. Welcome to the new season of Bravo and Blaze with Jenny Blaze. I am your host, Jenny Blaze, and I am so happy to be back. If you are new here, thank you for joining us. I've gone through many changes over the past few months and had to take a break from the podcast. I want to tell you all everything, but unfortunately, I am unable to talk about it at this time. So what we will be doing is moving forward with our normal scheduled programming that Scannaval so rudely interrupted the nerve. What is normal scheduled programming, you may ask? Well, every week we will be releasing this audio podcast on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and wherever you listen to your podcasts. The video portion will be uploaded to YouTube as well with visuals, so make sure you subscribe. Normally, we go through the weekly Bravo news, and then we recap or discuss the weekly lineup of new shows that aired for that week, which we are going to do today. However, I say we're going to move forward with normal schedule programming, except one major thing that is not in the normal schedule is BravoCon which is happening next week. So there won't be a new episode, a new podcast episode next week, but I am go going to be capturing tons of content that I'll be posting on YouTube. So going forward, we will be releasing a new episode every Friday. <laughs> oh, next week is BravoCon. I will be arriving in Vegas early to check out a vendor pump a party with the reality Ashley. Go follow her on Instagram and TikTok. I will also be checking out Planet 13, which is the largest dispensary in Las Vegas. And from the looks of their website and everything, their social media, this place looks off the hook. They seem to have made this dispensary really a destination spot it has there's like a food court in there they have different experiences for customers to come in and i'm looking forward to that so i will be capturing that for you all and what does this mean for you well if you're going to BravoCon, make sure you come find me in the vip lounge because i'll most likely just be chilling in there all three days <laughs> But if you're not going, make sure you are following me on Instagram because I will be going live throughout BravoCon to give you all updates. But I will also be capturing and documenting my experience throughout and will be sharing it with you on the podcast and on YouTube. Another reason to make sure you're following and subscribing because I will be sharing everything from what I'm packing, my looks, the ticket situation. I'm angry about that. Actually, maybe we'll talk about that today. But um, also the Bravos, I have ticket orchestra seat tickets for the Bravos. I also have a table for James Kennedy show and whatever other shenanigans we get into, I got you. Before we get into the Bravo news of the week, I wanted to give a few disclaimers. This is for entertainment purposes only. This is not your source for world news there is no fact checking. We're going off social media and other media outlets that are mostly credible, but sometimes may not be. So just take that with a grain of salt. This also is by no means a vehicle or avenue for any bullying or attacking of any Bravo Labs. We may have our opinions, but I believe it is crossing the line when people are actively going out of their way to try to hurt Bravo Labs. I just don't like that. I try to be as non-toxic as possible while still maintaining my opinions. And for example, I may say Tom Sandoval sucks to you all, whoever's listening or watching, but I'm not going to go up to his face and tell him that. I'm not going to direct message him and be like, you suck or tag him in a post where I'm making fun of him or something. I'm not going to do that. And I've thought about... I've been thinking about this a lot. What would I say to Tom Sandoval if I do see him at BravoCon? And I'm going to share with you. <laughs> I'm going to share with you all what you guys think I should say. But after thinking about it, I don't know. 
I'll, we'll get to it. Let's move on. What I like to do is use my Instagram stories as my reference for the weekly Bravo news. So I'm going to refer to that. But first in Bravo news, I don't know if this is like big news, but Jax unfollowed everyone except for six people last week, which I was so bummed about. I thought we were cool. <laughs> Turns out we are because he started following me again four days later my best friend I asked you all in my Instagram stories this week what you want to see at BravoCon and only two people responded with actual like legitimate responses one was VPR cast interviews I don't know if I can do that for you guys because for one I think they're going to be swamped two I feel like because of Scannaval and like how it really impacted me and this podcast. I feel like our parasocial relationship is odd. Like, I don't know how to describe it really. And I'm a little terrified to see them, any of them in person, except for James Kennedy, obviously. It's like, I love him. He's like my bro. <laughs> I sound crazy. Um, no, I love James Kennedy. I would probably go up to him. Ali, I'd probably go up to Peter for sure. I already talked to Peter actually um, to see if he was going to BravoCon. I don't know if I'm allowed to tell the answer to that, but also I would feel good going up to Katie, I think, but I don't know. I feel like maybe she might not like me. <laughs> oh no. I hope Terry Maloney is there. I would really like to give her a hug um, if she would allow me to. And um, obviously I would love to see Ariana, but there's no, I feel like there's no way I'm going to be able to even talk to Ariana, which is so wild because last year at BravoCon, she was the only Bravo, well, she wasn't the only one actually. Chef did come up one time, but um she was the only one where I was like just sitting, chilling, doing nothing. I was just like kind of sitting there soaking it in. And she came up and sat with me. And I was like, oh my gosh. And we just, we, I just really love her. And I would love to talk to her again at this BravoCon, but I feel like she's not going to be able to she's not going to be just walking around and seeing some, you know, finding someone to sit down with like she did last year. So I don't know. Manifesting. Who else? Oh, I would go up to Lala. I love Lala. So maybe it's just Tom Schwartz and Tom Sandoval that I feel kind of uncomfortable approaching. However, I did, I was talking to one of my OGs, JG, you know who you are. And we we're talking about like, like, I really don't know what I would say to Tom Sandoval if I came face to face with him at BravoCon, because I did multiple times last year. We have pictures together. We were like hanging out one night. So ugh, that's why I'm like so hurt, I think. <laughs> I'm kidding. Like, I'm not, I hope you guys know that I'm mostly never serious, but so I was talking to my OG, JG, and I kind of feel like, like I cannot be mean to him. It's just not in, it's not part of my style, <laughs> part of my character, I think, to just go up and be like, you're a piece of garbage. Like, if it got to that point, oh yeah, I would definitely say that to his face. However, like, I wouldn't just walk up to him and be like, you're a piece of garbage. I, and then I thought about like, I might actually, when I see him just like feel sad. And then I was like, oh my gosh, what if I like break down and like my first interaction with Tom Sandoval is us like both sobbing together. <laughs> that would be kind of cathartic to be honest. Like I do feel bad for him. But 
then I don't. I don't know. I just have so many mixed emotions about it. <laughs> but moving on. Okay. I don't know if I'll be able to do the VPR cast interviews, but I will do my best for you all. Another one that somebody called out was Maddie Reese from Southern Hospitality. And hell yeah, I am going to try to get at least a picture with Maddie Reese. I love her. Also this past week during Below Deck Med, I was so bored that I started doing um, these Tom Sandoval haunted house <laughs> gifts and tweets, whatever you want to call them. So I'll read through those real quick. I I was going fast, so like, I feel like I could have worded some of these better. So I'll try to do the like better version of it. Also, this whole week I've been just trying to get ready for BravoCon, and like, I'm like, damn it, I lost all my hair. I don't. When did I lose my hair? Uh, do I have time to get Botox under my armpits? Because I'm definitely gonna be sweating the whole time I'm there. And then I went to the gym for the first time this year. So I'm hoping I'll lose 20 pounds by the time Bravo comes Bravo Con this year. Or by the time I'm at BravoCon. Ay, ay, ay. A haunted house, but you have to walk around in the fur coat that Tom Sandoval just baked the piss into with the sun. That was season nine, I think. And I think it was in like one of the bonus episodes at the end of the season. And they were playing Jenga in Palm Springs on that trip where I think it was Rochella, but they were playing uh, Jenga and Tom Sandoval pulled a Jenga piece and on it, it said freestyle, <laughs> freestyle rap. And so you, someone's, busted B I think it was James and he's like yo yo so I got real drunk last night and I pissed on my fur coat <laughs> I don't know it was all it was a horrible freestyle but really he was just confessing to this grotesque act that he did which is so on brand because Jojo Siwa was on Howie Mandel and said that Tom Sandoval on Special Forces one night pissed in the corner of the room because I guess it was like a whole big deal for them to have to go to the bathroom. They'd have to like go in pairs and run or whatever. And so instead of doing that, Tom Sandoval just pissed in the corner of the room. <laughs> and the next day the staff was like, oh, pissed in the, in the corner of the room. <laughs> turns out it was Tom Sandoval. And I just cannot help but think of the connection of him pissing on that fur coat and Lala's face where she's like you could tell she's already cringing when he's starting to freestyle because he was bad but then the actual story that he was telling she was like you baked the piss into your fur coat <laughs> I will never forget that for the rest of my life but yeah that's the haunted house you gotta wear that fur Okay, next one. A haunted house, but you are stuck at the front row of a Tom Sandoval at the most extra concert. I truly feel like that would be like terror. Um, a haunted house, but you have to watch Tom Sandoval fake cry hysterically. <laughs> like he did with Lisa. <laughs> oh my gosh. A haunted house with Tom Sandoval follows you around playing his penis flute and trumpet. James, James is, he's like, I love when James is trying to be nice, but like inside, you know, he's got these like one-liners that would probably destroy someone. And he's like, mm, okay, yeah, mm-hmm, that's good. <laughs> Oh, I need to go watch that. Maybe I'll do that this weekend if I have time. A haunted house, but Tom Sandoval is painting your nails white. You have matching nails with Tom Sandoval. A haunted house, but you have to shave Tom Sandoval's forehead. A haunted house, but you're sober Kristen driving around Tom Sandoval because he lost his license. Do you guys remember that from like season one? Oh, I would have been so annoyed. 
I think I have a couple. <laughs> a haunted house, but you're forced to walk the streets of LA with Tom Sandoval and pretend you didn't call paparazzi. Those are my Tom Sandoval haunted houses. <laughs> okay, let me go to Potomac because I could not stop laughing at these taglines that came out. And I'm super excited for the next season. Okay. <laughs> Candace, I didn't hear. I just saw on social media. And like, I actually kind of quit watching all trailers, all sneak peeks, all that stuff. I was like, you know what? I'm making a conscious dis decision to not watch these because I want I want the full episode packaged to me at once. I don't want it broken out for my purposes of watching. Like if you guys do that, that's fine. I used to do that too. I'm not judging at all, but it sounds like I'm judging now. Damn it. Anyways. Okay. So <laughs> apparently Candace is singing her tagline and her tagline is when they go low, I just hit high notes. I don't know how she's singing this. Like, when they go low, I just hit her notes. Like, what is she, how does she say it? I don't know. All right, Robin. <laughs> I just took a DNA test and it turns out I 100% don't care. I'm sorry. Like, I forget this one. <laughs> I love this tagline so much. I think it's hilarious. And it, but it's annoying too at the same time because it's Robin and like, wasn't she going to get kicked off? Ugh, why is she back? Oh my gosh. I, I don't want to hate on Robin. Like, I think one on one in real life, like, we'd be cool. But I even gave her a gift last year at BravoCon. But she was, her last season, she was so annoying. And I'm just, oh, she better step it up and I'm annoyed that she also her bluetooth speaker is part of the nominations for one of the bravos awards I'm gonna be there if she wins that I may boo <laughs> should I I'm no I can't boo I could boo actually because no one will hear me I booed when Heather Gay or people were giving Heather Gay a standing ovation last year at the Salt Lake City panel. And I was like, what? Boo! <laughs> Couldn't believe it. I was like, you people, something's wrong with you. But actually, I kind of like Heather Gay now. So I don't know. I'm conflicted. <laughs> Moving on to Karen Huger. Oh, my God. Karen Huger. I love, love, love the Grand Dame. Let me just read this tagline. I don't ride the fence, honey. I am the fence. You ride me. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh my God. I need Karen to explain that one. Ashley Darby. You don't have to dig for gold when you shine this bright. Cute. I'm Brian. I like it. Dr. Wendy Osefo, if you're going to test this professor, be prepared to fail. It's very on brand. I want to fix my hair. This is bothering me. Do I like it better like this? No, I don't. Okay, I like basically just made myself look exactly the same. <laughs> okay, Giselle, I'm no angel, but give me some grace and you'll learn to adore me. All right, it's not bad, but it's kind of boring. Mia Thornton, it doesn't matter the size of our home. I'm always the queen of this castle. <laughs> I was a stank on it. I don't know why. Um, Neka Ahim, I, we don't know her, new housewife. Nigeria raised me, LA made me, and Potomac will remember me. <laughs> I actually got chills. <laughs> that was very good. I like that one. Ooh. Okay, so I just did this little thing. Um, I'm trying to get you guys to tell me what you want to see at BravoCon. So I did this little thing where I said, if I see Craig, I'm going to ask him why he blocked me. 
If I see Andrea, I will hug him. If I see baby gorgeous, I will find the nearest Diet Coke for her. If I see Ariana, I will cry. If I see Sutton, I'm going to tell her to stop being a cheap ass and buy a carriage for that damn horse because we know you got the money. If I see James Kennedy, I will offer him some. I was, uh, I was making a 420 sign for those who are listening. If I see Shep, I will say and do nothing. If I see Captain Jason, I will once again apologize for walking in on him using the restroom at BravoCon last year and ask if he still has my card because I forced him to take it after I apologized to him. If I see Uba, I will ask for a picture with her. I have so many other ones and I did get some feedback on this. Bow down to the grand dom after I ask her what her tagline means. Um, if I see Candace, I will immediately burst into the chorus of dry back complete with choreography near nothing. You are hilarious. And I've been thinking about that all morning. I listened to dry back on repeat when I was walking on the treadmill this morning and while I was doing my makeup. <laughs> and I started practicing. I have this and I think I'm going to bring it to BravoCon. And if I do see Candace, I think I might turn it on. Must really think I'm playing. Yeah. Should I do it? <laughs> we'll see if I have enough balls. I do have enough balls. Like I actually have too much balls, too many, too many balls. Um, They might kick me out. <laughs> <laughs> I might take away my microphone. Please, please don't ban me. Raquel voice. Ooh. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm thinking about doing that with Candace. Um, Mary, if I see her, I'm going to shove my real Gucci shoe up her ass. <laughs> no, if I see Mary, I'm definitely, I'm going to have to introduce myself. I think I need to. I need a picture with Mary Cosby. Okay, I'm going to go into the shows now. Okay, so this week we had the Real Housewives of New York reunion, part one of the reunion. And I have to say, like, I haven't been paying attention that much to this season. Like, I, I did like it in the beginning, and then I, it kind of faded a little bit for me. And... Also, I feel very awkward talking about this, this franchise, this show, because I have a mutual friend with one of the housewives. So it's kind of awkward, but I will talk about one, one thing I remember from this week's episode that stood out to me and Jessel is definitely one of my new favorites and when she was talking about how you know Aaron and Cy were they were being mean girl up towards her this season and talking about how like she hadn't had sex with her husband and you know like oh where is he going which by the way they did insinuate that Pavit was going to Vietnam as like for like sex tourism or something. So I Googled sex tourism countries and I didn't see Vietnam on that list, which made me actually angry at that point. Cause I was like, as a half Asian, I'm like that, those are like microaggressions that bother me as an Asian. Like that's not cool. And not only that, but you know, they kept trying to like insinuate that Pavit was cheating. And I loved Pavit's video of his flight, his trip. I stand Pavit. I definitely want to meet Pavit at BravoCon. But the part that stood out to me the most from this week's episode is when Jessel was reminding everyone like, hey, you were also doing this after I had gone through four years of IVF and I have chills right now. I have goosebumps and chills because that's awful. Like it truly is so sad that we have 
any anyone still in this day and age who feels like it's okay to comment on people's like reproductive or sexual life. And it's like, you don't know what people, what other people are going through. And it broke my heart because I can't imagine not only did Jessel go through four years of IVF, but she also had to go through it alone. And she seemed like she was very, very strong. Like when she talked to her mom, she was saying like, you know, we did it a few times and it didn't work and they spent so much money. And then, you know, she's getting two for the price of one. And oh my God, I'm going to cry for Jessel. Love her. Okay, moving on. Yeah, chills. Okay, what else? Below deck med. Snooze, 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 snooze. I am so bored with it. I made all those haunted house tweets during Below Deck Med because I was so bored. And I don't know if it's Sandy. I think it's probably Sandy, but uh, it's unfortunate because I'm a Below Deck gal. I love Below Deck. My favorite Below Deck right now is Below Deck Adventure. And I really hope I get to meet Captain Carrie because him and I did a couple live instagram lives together <clears throat> and also i bought some girl scout cookies from his daughter <laughs> so i'm a big captain carrie fan anyways sandy um i was also bummed because on mondays special forces on fox is usually on but the the baseball <laughs> the baseball is having a super bowl or something just kidding. I know it's the World Series. There's seven games. Nah, nah, nah. I don't care. I don't care about baseball. And I'm annoyed because Special Forces became my new favorite show right now. Everything that, that's airing right now, Special Forces is my favorite show. And I have no shame because I know some people are like, I'm not going to watch that because Tom Sandoval's on it. Um, I'm definitely watching it because Tom Sandoval's on it. And especially this show, because it's basically beyond scared straight, but for Bravo or reality stars. So yeah, I was pretty bummed about that. One thing I am not supporting with Tom Sandoval, like I'm not hate watching his podcasts. Like I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but I will hate watch Special Forces. And I think that's where, or maybe it, it's almost like healing and giving me some closure with the whole scan of all thing but it's also kind of not because he had the opportunity to really like show and demonstrate that he's changed or learned something but i don't think he has <laughs> but also uh there was no salt lake city this week and you guys know or if you don't know now you know Salt Lake City is one of my favorite franchises. I have like a love-hate relationship with it because it has gotten so dark in the past. And I feel like this season is like lighter and less dark and less toxic, hopefully, but maybe not. I don't know. I like literally they surprise us every time and I don't know what to expect anymore. Maybe that's part of why I like it so much because I'm like, they're really they will throw the craziest and wildest things at us. <laughs> so whatever, we missed that this week. But in place of Salt Lake City, we had the premiere of Winter House season three. And as I was watching the marathon before the premiere, you know, like from past seasons, for one, I was very triggered by the girl who expects compliments. Go check out my whole rant on her from last season. I was like, holy crap, I forgot how activated this show made me last year. It was like, actually, now that I look back, this is pre scandal That was, that was like, maybe what was fueling me at that time <laughs> before scandal and things got kind of boring until Scandal happened. But anyways, I'm loving Winter House. Number one, Tom Schwartz is on Winter House. Not only is Tom Schwartz on Winter House, but 
Scannable dropped on March 3rd of this year. Winter House season three filming started on March 10th. <laughs> I remember those days. That week was the craziest week of this entire year. And so to see what's transpiring during that time, like it's also kind of weird because we saw Stars on Mars, which was filmed after Winter House, that already aired. So we saw, like, it's weird. Tom Tom Schwartz filmed Vanderpump Rules, like those extra scenes after Scannaval dropped, then went straight to Winter House. Then after Winter House is done filming, he goes straight back to film Vanderpump Rules, the reunion. Then I think he goes to Stars on Mars in Australia, which is where Katie from Below Deck lives or whatever. So it was like stalker status, stage five clinger. But it's just, there's a couple of things going on here. Let me go back to my post this week. Like I became alive again because of Winter House this week. Mm-hmm. Also, I want to remind you all that I interviewed Jason Cameron, who's a cast member of Winter House season three. He's not there yet, but I interviewed him on Valentine's Day. We have an annual tradition where we have a platonic Valentine's Day date on the podcast. And that was recorded right before Winter House filmed, obviously, um, like a month before. And that was also during the time where him and Giselle, their relationship was starting to kind of be leaked or whatever and people are speculating a lot about it but I don't know he I asked him about it he gave a little he gave an answer I didn't I don't know what it meant but just go back and check it out winter house winter house by the way yeah Luann I bought myself a cameo and I bought myself a cameo from Sam on Winter House. She's a guest on Winter House, I, I believe, but she was a cast member on Summer House and she's dating Corey, who I don't think I like. I love, love, love Sam, but I don't think I like her boyfriend, which is heartbreaking for me. But I also am sad that Luke isn't there because I feel like after Luke learned his lesson on like how inappropriate and like touchy and over the line he was, he like, I think he almost got trauma from it where he like really took a step back and was like, I'm not even going to go there. Like you've scared me for life. So now I'm just going to be a shit stir. And that's when he's like talking about, you know, Corey and the girl who expects compliments. He's like, she thinks you guys are going to be in a relationship. It was so good. Poor Luke. He's not there, but yeah. Uh, Winter House brought me back to life. Okay, so another thing that I want to remind you all, Tom Schwartz, his first paparazzi encounter after Scandal dropped was in LAX when he was on his way to Winter House to go film, okay? And so there's two and a half minutes Go check out my um, Instagram because it's on my feed. Uh, TMZ TMZ caught this. So, you know, giving them their shout out or whatever. Um, <clears throat> but my first reaction when I saw this back then, I was like, why is Tom Schwartz even talking to them? <laughs> like, you don't have to talk to them, Schwartz. And he basically gave a two and a half minute interview where he basically called Tom Sandoval a POS, which was hilarious. And he, I think he goes, yeah, he's basically a piece of shit and he knows it. (laughs) So go check out that video because if you're watching Winter House, it's a good refresher of Tom Schwartz's state of mind coming into the house because at the end of the episode, you see Tom finally get there and he just like collapses 
and he kisses the ground and he in the next episode he's talking about he starts like going through oh Sandoval's the most hated most vilified man and you know I, I didn't do anything but I'm right behind him he goes you know he told me about the one night stand and this is where I was like oh hold up because the first time they started mentioning this one night stand that they were so very particular about saying and repeating over and over again the one night stand one time one time I believe I believe that Sandoval Schwartz and Raquel all had this like let's get our story straight because Raquel even confessed and they were supposed to stick with this it only happened one night and then blah 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 whatever and I think that Tom Schwartz may be lying and covering up and going with this story that they all had in Winter House during the filming of Winter House. Because remember, during the Vanderpump Rules reunion, Schwartz still tried to maintain this like one night stand thing, whatever. It was one night, blah, blah. Meanwhile, he didn't know that Raquel had her private interview with Andy where she confessed that she, her and Sandoval were sleeping together in Mexico, which is where Tom Schwartz kissed Raquel. And I need to know what he knew, how much he did know, and why he's going with this one night stand story. So just keep that in mind, y'all, when you watch, because... I mean, I'm guilty of this. I fall for Tom Schwartz every single time. Every time I'm like, oh, damn it, Schwartz, I like you. Why are you like this? And then, and I can see why Katie wound up being with him for so long because he does stupid stuff, but like he's so likable. But I wanted to remind everyone not to be fooled because we are all very easily fooled by him. Don't forget in the reunion, so after Winter House films, he goes and does the reunion. He allegedly fell in love with Katie Floody from Below Deck while he was in Winter House. And then when he, they're at the reunion, he threatens a cease and desist towards his wife on behalf of Joe. Joe, the girl that he doesn't even like. It, that's infuriating to me infuriating to me anyways the second thing oh my god shut up Tom auspicious circumstances okay the second thing he tr don't forget he tried to diminish he tried to diminish everything that happened to Ariana by reminding her of all the love and praise she's gotten all the opportunities and it's like he was saying it as if like that cancels out this egregious betrayal that he had a part in he played a role in this let's be honest don't forget they were in big bear tom schwartz was with tom sandoval raquel and joe like a month before Scannaval dropped. So oh, I didn't know and la la la. Oh, horseshit. Sorry. I'm sorry, Schwartz. You're not going to get away with this. And the third thing, I already mentioned it. He made out with Raquel while her and Scannaval were having sex in Mexico. And we really still don't know if he knew about the affair at that point. We will find out, hopefully. So yeah, Winter House basically has brought me back to life. <laughs> I love it. Okay, moving on though. We also had the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills season premiere. And I watched it, but I'll be honest, Beverly Hills is like my least favorite franchise. I find it to be so boring, lame, I think the arguments they have are just like, they're irritating to me. I don't like, I don't enjoy their pettiness because it feels dark too. Like there's underlying darkness there that just makes 
me feel icky. So yeah, the premiere, I mean, the whole time it's like emphasis on Kyle working out and not taking Ozempic, I guess. Erica saying, you know, the hormones made her lose weight. I want to know what hormones these are. Why don't you share this information with the rest of us? Because I need some. Um, oh my God, I'm going to say this. Oh, okay. Whew. So in Beverly Hills, we obviously start to see the breakdown of Kyle Mauricio's marriage. And I have to say, like, it seems so over the top. Like, she seems like she's acting. Like, even if it's real, it seems like extra. Like, she's being, she's delivering it in an extra way for the cameras or something. Like, when he was on the phone talking about Coachella, which that's a whole separate thing, but she was just like, <sighs> I, it just seems like she's trying to put on a show, kind of, and like, maybe she's been feeling like this for a while now, but she definitely is being rebellious, and that's fine. She has every right to be rebellious if she wants, but I think it stems from a a deep-rooted childhood trauma that she might have and I'm basing this totally on like hardly any information <laughs> because I don't study them but the the Richard sisters Kyle Kathy and Kim I find their life to be fascinating from what I've heard so far as far as like big Kathy being in the entertainment industry bringing her daughters to a club and don't forget, these are back in the days where people were getting away with a lot of heinous stuff. And I feel like those children were most likely abused in some way. And <clears throat> I'm not saying Big Kathy was complicit, but maybe she was. But maybe, I don't know, like maybe she turned a blind eye. I don't know. But I think a lot of that generational trauma has seeped down to Paris, which we've seen in Paris in Love. If you guys haven't watched it, go check it out because it shows Kathy Hilton in a totally different light than what we've all seen on Beverly Hills. And I find that family dynamic to be very interesting. And I think Kyle, or if you look at Kathy's parenting, and don't forget, Kathy's a lot older than Kyle. Like, I think Big Kathy wasn't the mom that, you know, the three daughters felt she should be. So they all took on this role as when they became a mother of like, this is how I need to be a mother for my children. And with Kathy, I think because she's the oldest, she, her parenting started with Kyle and she, Kyle was almost like, the prototype or like the the dry run of parenting for Kathy Hilton before she had Paris and Nikki and Paris was very rebellious and Kathy's way was very militant and like you do as I say and if you don't we're gonna make you and that's what led to you know Paris going to Provo where it turns out they were abusing the children. And I don't think Kathy knew. I really don't think Kathy knew about the abuse. But I, and I do think that she thought she was doing the right thing in that moment. But with Kyle, I think because she experienced not only maybe the neglect from Big Kathy, but then like militant parenting from younger Kathy, I think it made her be a mom that's like, I will never do these things to my children. And like, I do think that Kyle probably is a really good mom, but almost like too much. I remember back in like season one, where Mauricio was like, let's stay an extra day. They were like in some beautiful place on vacation or something. She's like, no, we got to get back to the kids. We got to get back to the kids. It's like, yeah, you, your husband wants to hang out with you for one day. Like, the hell but anyway so I feel like Kyle has been living her life the, a certain way to fit the mold of what she thinks a parent should be like because of her upbringing but now 
I think she even said, she's like, it doesn't even matter what I do. Like, why am I going to continue being, putting so much effort into this mold of a mother and wife I thought I should be when I'm not happy? And so I think she, for the first time, is going through a rebellious stage because her relationship with Kathy kind of fell out from last season. So it's like, what what am I, for Kyle, I think from her perspective, it's like, what am I hanging onto this for? Okay, let's go move on to Southern Charm. So <laughs> Southern Charm. <laughs> Southern Charm this week was good. And I attribute that all to Madison and JT, actually. I, I'll give him a like supporting role award or whatever. But oh my God, it was so funny. So this is the episode after Olivia's brother dies, which was oh, so awful, so sad. And I've always been sad for Austin, knowing that his older sister died and how tragic it was, how she died and like how young he was and like how they said like, they had his sister to like fix things or something. Like, I don't know. It was just, it's very sad to me, Austin's story. And I do feel sad for him and have empathy for him until like he continues to make poor decisions that are not just bad decisions, but they're harmful to people. Like he hurts people. Like what he did with Sierra, that was awful. What he what he's doing with Olivia and Taylor, like it's just. I know Austin probably hates himself, and a lot of his actions have to do with that, which makes me sad for him. But he's also like a grown ass man, and he needs to stop hurting people. But anyways, <clears throat> I think you know he keeps saying like I want to be there for Olivia for her. But I don't think that's true. I think he wants to be there for himself, which granted, like, I'm not trying to shade him for that. Like, I think rightfully so in this circumstance, like, this must be triggering his trauma hardcore. So I get it. But at the same time, like, Austin, please just like, think about someone else other than yourself for once. That's all I got to say. Oh my God. The scene with Hudson made me cry. Like I could not believe that they caught this. Like I, I have chills. Like this little, this little boy comes home crying. He's all, his legs are all dirty. He had a bite mark, multiple bite marks. That's who bites. And then his, the kid who bit him, his mom was there and she was like, stop, stop, stop or whatever. Like, what? That was, oh my God, heartbreaking. And I just love Madison. Like, I know some people are like, oh, she's mean. And I'm like, yeah, but like some of her meanness is like warranted. Some of it may be over the top. Like, I feel like the thing towards Taylor was a bit overboard because like, what did Taylor do to her? <laughs> it was whatever, unnecessary, but also like not wrong. Like Taylor is acting like she's a Bible thumper and then sending nudes. Like, I guess, I don't know. She said, Jesus isn't going to hate me because I sent a nude and she's right. So I don't know. But Frag was on one saying uh, that he's better than everyone there because he was born on the right side of the country. <laughs> oh my, who does that? Who, you're not even like, <laughs> I just would never do something like that i'm from new york like unless i was really getting ganged up on i'd be like you guys lost the war or whatever <laughs> i don't know i might throw it out there as a last resort but like, he it was so uncalled for like all he said was he started he was like oh i used to pee out in that bush or whatever and jt's just like 
clearly you didn't go to cotillion over in whatever Delaware or whatever. That's what Craig just went for the low blow. Yeah, that's because I was born on the right side of the country. You said I was born a winner. You were probably born a loser. <laughs> and Shep wasn't wrong. He was like, so you're basically calling all of us losers. <laughs> Craig, oh my God. <laughs> So Madison goes off on Taylor saying like, I don't sit here and pretend like I'm a Bible thumper, Bible thumper kneeling on my knees at Bible study because I claim to be a slut. I'm just retired and I lost it. Madison, are you prepping before you clock in because you are killing me? <laughs> I claim to be a slut. I'm just retired. Oh my gosh. Then Shep tries to like, you know, do his Shep thing, of course. And Madison's response to him, read a scripture and go to bed. Oh my God. I loved it. It gave me, um, fix your hair. I can't even look at you <laughs> from that one reunion where Craig was insane, completely insane. Oh my gosh, Madison's killing me. So JT, this is where JT steps in because Shep was clear, clearly starting to become rude. And I loved it. JT stood up. He's like, Shep, what we're not going to do, we're not going to disrespect the woman. He had to like remind him multiple times, which was like sad. Like, Shep, Really? And he even said, you're the oldest guy in the room. Grow up. And I wanted to be like, next to Whitney. Don't forget Whitney's the oldest creep in this group. And don't forget Whitney is the executive producer. And don't forget that Whitney was sleeping with Catherine when she was only 19 years old. And when season one started, and then he got all butt hurt because she started dating Thomas and Shep and Craig were butt hurt because... She hooked up with them, but didn't like them. And then everyone was slut shaming her. Yeah, don't forget. I don't forget. Justice for Catherine. But anyways, JT, I liked it. He stood up for, he was being a Southern gentleman. He even said, Sh be chivalrous. Thank you, JT. Because I don't think any men these days understand what chivalry is started don't get me started uh Kristen Stewart was on watch what happens live last night and I thought it was like the most bizarre thing at one point she said what is Roni and I was like why are you here but whatever so another thing I really need to know was Craig being serious when he said he doesn't believe in pandas <laughs> like where did that come from he's like okay so who here believes in pandas or something <laughs> like what and he's like yeah but we've never seen them I'm like what is this kid talking about So also this week, House of Villains was on, I guess, spoiler alert, and anyone who listens to this podcast, just be prepared for spoilers. I'm expecting that you guys already watch these shows and we're just talking about them now. So, I, but uh, coincidentally or ironically, I didn't watch House of Villains. However, I do know I heard that Jax was the first one to go and I'm so bummed about it. I really really want like I was rooting for Jax and I'm very very sad and I don't know why New York felt the need in the last moment to just be like oh by the way you're a demon <laughs> I did not see that coming and also it made Jax cry he's like I'm a good Christian father Oh my God, that show is so good. I'm still going to watch it. I know like sometimes I fall off when these on um, these types of shows when I'm only watching for like, like I fell off on Stars on Mars when uh, Schwartz was gone. Um, 
I'm still in, on watching Special Forces, so that's good. But uh, yeah, I'm still gonna keep watching <laughs> some villains because it's so good. New York is so funny. Oh my god! She's like, yeah, I know you're a demon. <laughs> Demonic. Oh boy, what else? I watched the Kardashians. I don't really have anything to report on that. It almost feels like overproduced it feels fake like we know reality tv is not like real really and true like real life we know that right we know a lot of things are staged and like just the mere fact that there's cameras in these people's faces that changes their behavior so like we have to keep these things in mind but with the kardashians it's like I don't know. I don't think this is even uh, an accurate reflection of their true life. Like, I do feel like Bravo still gives us a somewhat accurate reflection of the people that they have on their shows. But with the Kardashians, it feels like really manufactured. I don't know if that explains it. But also, I love true crime. And I've been watching some Dateline, some shows on the ID channel, and I really love it. So I might be talking about some of these other shows on the podcast as we go forward. But for now, that's all I got for this week. Don't forget, make sure you follow on all social media. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Leave a five-star review. It is the freest way to help support Bravo and Blaze. This time next week, we will be Bravo conning it up. So stay tuned. I'm going to share as much as I can with you all. And I'll catch you later. Stay